Yes, thank you. It, uh, actually, I'm very happy to introduce here, not anymore Tartu, but uh, Venice instead. So we have uh, Alice Janssen from European Cultural Academy, uh, and she has recorded us a video. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alice Janssens. I'm a cultural economist and the University Collaborations Manager at the European Cultural Academy. I'm really excited to be here at Delta Days amongst such a group of engaged and innovative people. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to join online or in person, so here I am in recorded format. But hopefully I will be able to join in some of the later sessions today. So for this presentation, I was asked to speak a bit about innovation, creativity in the city of Venice, and also a bit about a studio that we gave with the University of Tartu this past summer. So to start us off, what is creativity? Typically, when we think about creativity, we view it through a lens of the creative industries, comprising artistic and design-related disciplines, but it's something that really can be found across disciplines. Um, and actually can enforce relationships in between them. When we think about creativity, we also typically consider it from a locational perspective. So we think about creative clustering and placemacing research, placemaking research, specifically from the direction of authors such as Michael Porter and onwards. So we think about clustering in historical centers and industrial districts in areas such as Silicon Valley and even possibly in academic areas as well, such as the Delta Maya building. So we think about the like for knowledge sharing purposes, from business development purposes and the like. And I think this is especially important in current academic research in regards to considering interdisciplinarity as an aspect of creative research and its development, as it allows us to learn from kind of historically and also to learn from different fields that approach things in a different way. This is similarly the case with innovation. When we consider innovation, it's typically broken down into a number of different categories, including incremental, architectural, modular, and radical innovation. But if we think about it more broadly, it's a step beyond creating. It's a step beyond invention. It's actually, if we think about it from Fagerberg, Maori, and Nelson's perspective, it's the idea of making an improvement or a significant contribution with something. So actually thinking about how you can move beyond the creation to actually move something forward, turn it into something that is usable and innovative and interesting, and oftentimes actually from a business perspective, moving it towards the market. So if we think about the concepts of innovation and creativity, there are a myriad of different global locations that we can relate them to. But the location that I'm actually sitting in right now which is Palazzo Michele on Strada Nova in Venice. And the city that we're surrounded by more broadly, so the city of Venice, is a perfect location for considering innovation, business, and creativity, and actually using as a base for the development and drive of these more broadly, actually now, not just from a historical perspective. But thinking about Venice from a historical perspective, from its development as a key center of trade from the Roman period onwards, Venice developed as a global node for, of trade for international networks. And it is, as we know, the starting point and the home of the ever famous Marco Polo, among many other explorers and innovators. Fostered by its geographic positioning and technological developments, the city gained a competitive advantage, fostering not only its economy, but allowing the city's artistic and cultural fields to flourish as well, and allowing its educated populace not only specialization, but the capacity to engage with multi in multiple interacting disciplines. Um, this really went on until the 17th century, but from the 18th century, there was a decline in the city's positioning, resulting from their stubbornness to stick to a certain type of ship, predominantly, which had an impact on their trade. But from the 19th century onward, Venice's positioning also kind of increased again, but in a slightly different direction. From 1895, 
in the midst of the global trade fair fervor which was taking place in the late 19th century, Venice reintroduced itself, its position, as a key center for international trade, but this time in the creative fields with the introduction of the International Art Exhibition, what we now know as the Biennale. And with this, the introduction of a form of soft power that actually gave the city a bit more a position again. Along with this, during this period, there was the introduction of a number of key cultural institutions, which are still considered to be some of the foremost in regards to their discipline. So, um, despite flux throughout the 20th century, the Art Biennale and its more recent siblings, the Architecture, Theatre, Music and Film Festivals, positioned Venice as a key location for the meeting and sharing of innovations and of creativity, and as a location for the gatekeepers of these industries to come together and drive knowledge forward. Not only does the Biennale play a key role in supporting the city financially, and also from a kind of soft power from an economic and a political perspective, but it brings in projects and plans from across the world. And I think even if we think about this year's exhibition, which was delayed from 2020 and has now been on in 2021 and hit by a global pandemic, there are still some incredible statistics and some numbers and some ideas that we can think about at, that really, really explain Venice and the Biennale as a microcosm as Venice's position as a global center for innovation and creativity. So talking about 2021 and the How, How Will We Live Together exhibition, which is the theme of this year's Biennale as given by Hashim Sarkis, like head curator, um, this year, there are 112 participants in the competition from 46 countries, all focusing towards the theme, how will we live together, through an architectural but a truly interdisciplinary perspective. Along with this, there are 60 national participants in pavilions across the city this year, including three new pavilions, those from Grenada, Iraq, and Uzbekistan. Each of these focusing their attention towards a variety of key concepts for the driving of architecture and design disciplines forward. So the fair and the city now act as a key platform for the development of innovations within and outside of the arts as well. And with that, it seems to be a perfect place for academics and pr practitioners alike to find inspiration. So with this in mind, I'd like to give a brief description of the European Cultural Academy and also of the program that we run this summer with the University of Tartu, within which we visited a number of Venice's key cultural institutions and, of course, La Biennale. So, um, the European Cultural Academy is an organization that is based out of Venice and out of Amsterdam. We run short intensive courses and workshops in collaboration with universities focused on art, architecture, urban design, innovation, and the like. In these events, we focus on a detailed subject such as innovation and creativity, the development of sustainable healthy cities, water and its relationship to design, specific architects, and our perfect example, the course that we run this past summer, which is entitled Accelerate Knowledge of the Past to Tomorrow, Delta Maya. And this course was really focused on finding innovative and creative approaches from the past and relating them to the Delta Maya building to the University of Tartu and seeing how these ideas can help develop perceptions of academics, of researchers, of students from a range of different disciplines for their future knowledge. Um, so we're currently developing studios with universities, including the University of Tartu, University of Melbourne, University of Oxford, University of Southern California, the Bartlett Institute at the University College London, and more. And these are focused on a range of subjects, but they link strongly to knowledge development and an awareness creation for student, students, academics, and practitioners alike. We're always looking to drive forward innovation, creativity, and knowledge development through the running of intensive studios for knowledge transfer, brainstorming, and along with this, project development. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the program that took place this past summer, because I know the next presentation of Professor Samatabet is really gonna go into detail about that. But I sincerely hope that you find it interesting. And if you do have any questions about Venice, about creativity, about innovation, or about any of our programs, 
you're very happy to contact me at alice at europeanculturalacademy.com. Thank you.